presentation was about research uh, framework for behavior change kind of innovations. How do you deconstruct them? And by deconstructing them, how do you analyze them for more success? Behavior change is becoming increasingly big because of the kind of innovation it's producing, right? Um, most of these examples we talked about um, GoPro, we talked about Airbnb, there's Mint, all of these have disrupted their own market and created tremendous success. So I think that's one big part of the driver. The second big driver of behavior change is that people are, the markets are changing, uh, the kind of behaviors that people have is changing. They're changing at a much faster rate. The markets are getting saturated with what we can do, so that's the other big driver of behavior change kind of innovations. There's cognitive needs and there is physical needs. I think we've oversaturated with physical needs, right? In, in the developed world that we have, we've got solutions for almost everything. But when you have too many things, what you don't have is either time, emotion, energy, and most of them are cognitive elements, right? So when people say, I don't, I have everything, I don't want, give me nicer thing, the nicer thing is things that work, things that don't make me think, things that, you know, don't make me fight and make judgments. So the switch is going to be predominantly, the next wave of innovation that we will see coming would be cognitive need solving, not physical need solving. One of the things which I think it's the other way around, the luxuries of a small business is nobody knows who you are, right? You could mess up, you could start all over again in a whole different space, and people still won't know who you are and you can have a clean slate. And the challenges with the big businesses, you have established a brand, you've established a heritage. The, the ability for you to take random risks and start all over is much, much high, difficult because of the investments that you have. So I think there is both to be learned from the big versus small, small versus big, right? There is a reason why all small companies after they hit a certain size start behaving like big companies, right? And then we start looking at other small companies who are seem to be more innovative. Some of the areas which I think small innovative firms, uh, companies can do better is their, their ability to go to market is much different. They can experiment in different ways. They can, you can play with less than perfect information. Um, they can also change and evolve their business model very quickly. When you have invested millions of dollars in supply chain and resources and this, that, it, the ability to do that is extremely expensive and it's difficult. So I think that's one part. The other flip side of it is how do small companies, the challenge small companies sometimes have is scale. So how do they quickly scale? Big companies, uh, you know, that's what they really do well is scale small ideas really well. So I think there is a being innovative and looking at small companies is part one of the thing. I think it's a symbiotic relationship where small companies also need to look at big companies of how they scale processes and systems. One of the challenges with the small companies is, right, the essence of the company is in the founder. And once you leave, founder leaves, the company loses its meaning. Big company, you cannot ever have the essence in the founder, right? Because people would leave. Those elements, how do big companies do that, right? How do they build that culture into, the, into their network so that when CEOs change or when you know, executives change, they still are able to maintain who they're all about, right? Um, we've been lucky with our company, being a family-owned company, we've had five generations. So we've, we, we value that, but other companies, I think they could be a back and forth.